Greetings, beloved Princeton United Methodist Church community. It's Pastor Jenny here with another update for you. And scripture today comes from John chapter 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. If you were listening on Sunday when the Reverend Dr. Deborah Blanks preached, she talked about the I am statements in the book of John and how um, important they are, how uh, powerful they are. And this is another one of those I am statements. I am the true vine, Jesus says. This is such a beautiful and rich um, passage and um, you can sit with it for a long time and I hope you will. And one of the things that I particularly love about this passage is that this is where we hear the invitation of Jesus to abide with him, to dwell in Jesus, to be less about doing and more about being, being with God, letting God be with us, being with each other in those loving spaces. That doesn't mean we shouldn't do, we have to do, of course, but we tend to um, do a lot to avoid some of the being, because just being can be a little uncomfortable. Being with ourselves, being with God, letting God be with us, these things are actually kind of hard to do. Another thing I love about this abiding kind of thing, uh, this image and this invitation, is that when we um, are talking about our discipleship path, if you recall this booklet, um, our, our understanding at PUMC of discipleship and what it means to follow Jesus and to grow in our discipleship, we talk about three invitations. And one of them, the first one, is just come and see. What is this about? What is Jesus about? What is church about? What is this... Christianity thing about, um, but even within those things, many of you who are watching this are beyond those questions, but there still may be pieces of the discipleship journey where you're still kind of coming and seeing, like, what is this part about? Um, what about this part? But then the next invitation that Jesus gives is come and follow. And this is where we are, we are we're in it. We have decided that we are following Jesus and we've been practicing it. It involves a lot of doing. But the third invitation is come and abide. And in the Methodist language, we also use some words to describe the different kinds of grace or the different aspects of grace that are at work in us in each of these three um, invitations. So provenient grace goes with come and see, justifying grace goes with come and follow and sanctifying grace comes with come and abide and when we talk about sanctification there are other words that come with it like holiness and christian perfection and being perfected in love and and really sanctification is the aim of discipleship it is the thing that grace is working in us to achieve but even this achieve language is a little too much in the realm of doing rather than being um, so it's a little tricky even with our language there but to be sanctified means that we are um, closer to union with God we don't experience God so much as a, a different other far away distant experience or entity we experience a union with God we experience a unification with one another we experience that God has transformed us by God's grace to be holy to be set apart for God's good works and to be perfected in love which does not mean that we're perfect but rather that um, we have learned to love as God loves. We have learned to see the world, to see others, to see ourselves, to see creation, to see um, uh, one another, see God, I think I named all those, um, in such a way that God sees them so that we can love all those things, 
God, creation, others, ourselves, the way Jesus does. That, by the way, is our definition of what discipleship is about. And so, so this passage about abiding with God and being this image of the branches and the vine and us all being connected together is a beautiful description of what sanctification is about what the discipleship journey leads us to and how it transforms us. Um, and it goes on to talk about how that love perfected in us changes everything. It changes everything. So I invite you this week to dwell, to reflect, to spend a little time on this image, Jesus as the true vine and you as a branch. How is that image already true for you? What do you discover newly about it as you sit with it in these moments? What is the invitation that God is giving to you as you listen, as you reflect, as you dwell with this passage and with the God who gives it to us in these moments? I commend those reflections to you um, this week as we ahead of looking at it together um, on Sunday. I'll be preaching again this week. I've had a few weeks not preaching, um, so I'm anxious to get back uh, with you and look forward to exploring this more together on Sunday. I want to tell you about a few other things that are coming up. Um, the following Sunday uh, is Mother's Day. It's actually May 9th, and we have a very special treat in, in store for you. Tom Shelton, our director of our youth choirs, is putting on working with the children to create a children's musical. And what I mean is he hasn't just been teaching them songs. They've been writing this musical together. And what a beautiful thing. It's called I See God. And so um, Tom has been working with uh, the children's images and conversations that they've been having in, in Compassion Camp to put um, these songs together. They're going to reflect some on the Beatitudes. It's going to include some pictures and images of the children as well as them singing, of course. And our children are going to be leading all the service. I'll be there with them and some others will be helping too, but, um, but the children are really going to be leading us that day. And what a gift for Mother's Day. So I hope that you will not only be there, but maybe you have a mother figure in your life that you want to give this gift to of worship led by children that day um, as well. We also have um, at the end of the month, um, confirmation is on Pentecost Sunday. So because we're still in a pandemic, we are separating our confirmation service out. So um, in the morning, we will have our Pentecost service. On the, this is May 23rd, and that's Pentecost Sunday, a big celebration day in the life of our church, one of my favorites. But our confirmants are going to be helping to lead the service that morning. And then in the evening, at five o'clock in the evening, um, we're going to be having a live outdoor service that'll also be live streamed um, of our confirmation uh, experience. So we'll have another worship service to confirm our, um, our young people. And you're invited to that, whether you come in person, which you're welcome to, we'll be masked and distanced um, at the, in the big backyard of the Hayes family. Andrew and Gia um, have graciously opened their, their backyard for us, um, but you can also participate online for that as well, and it will be a joyous occasion. Um, along those same lines, we have a few families um, or people who are going to be baptized in the next couple of months. We're still working on pinning down exactly a date for that. But I, I want to invite you, if you have not been baptized or someone in your household has not been baptized and you've been thinking about it or even just wondering about it or what does it mean, this is a great time for you to inquire and ask about it. And so the way this works is if you show that interest, then you would have a time with me or Pastor Skitch, and we would talk with you about what baptism is and and um, and then invite you to make a decision to, to do that. Again, we do baptize all ages. There's no age limit with baptism, so we baptize infants. Um, and again, no, no, no upper age limit here. 
Um, in fact, one of the people who's going to be baptized is a teenager, and we're really excited about that. So depending on their age, we may do a couple of different things um, based on, uh, on that um, in terms of preparation for baptism. We prepare teenagers differently than we prepare infants for a baptism. So, um, so go ahead and inquire, and we will start um, that process uh, for you. And the more the merrier when it comes to baptisms. We, we do these in groups. Um, rarely do we do them. Uh, individually unless it's just time and that's who we've got uh, with us so so um, go ahead and let us know if you're interested in that um, another thing that I want to point out and ask of you this is actually such a gift to me if you if you help me with this one thing so in your happenings today and it will be there the next couple of weeks there is a worship survey so I've done this, this is the third year I've sent this out to you um, or something similar out and this is your chance to tell me um, what's on your mind and what are the questions you have what are the topics that you want to, us to explore in worship together um, and so I take this information and I work with the other clergy and we put together um, a plan a worship theme plan for the year and um, and your responses to this really do help shape it. Every year, I've taken some of what you've said, and um, and it has directly shaped how we uh, put worship together. So please do that. We would love you to do that um, by uh, by when we'll put that in the <laughs> we'll put that in the in the in the written um, materials there for you. But don't wait too long. It'll only be open for a couple of weeks. But we would love to have your input. One last thing um, to point you to is that in the newsletter that will be coming out on Saturday, there is um, some information there about a draft of a vision, uh, a vision plan, a statement plan um, that we have been working on. There's been a visioning team. It even has a timeline there. They'll tell you a little bit more about this. Um, but we've had a visioning team at work over the past um year and a half discerning a vision for our church. What are the next steps that God is inviting us into um, that help us to live into um, who we were created to be as a church community? And so that um, is, there's some information about that in the newsletter, and then there will be a um, place where you can see the full long version, long, but there's a short version that you can focus on, and there's a long version you can read if you want it. And then um, there are some questions asking for your input and feedback to help shape it into a final version that we hope to have um, completed in about another month or six weeks. So this is important and we would really love to have your voice included in, um, in the shaping of our vision, which also will include some mission, an, an updated mission statement, some core value work, a look at um, many aspects of our congregation are included in there too. All right, friends, thank you so much. It's, again, it's always such a gift to be um, partnering with you on this journey of discipleship as we continue to learn to let God's grace transform us to be perfected in love, to love one another better, to become um, a more beloved community, and to live more fully into the kingdom of God. Grace and peace to you.